Hello there and welcome to another vlog. Please ignore my voice. I'm getting over a cold. Never been sick, perfect immune system. I feel fine. My voice has a mind of its own, <laughs> but today is a busy day. We are going to a school to volunteer. We're working on some digital escape room stuff. We're preparing for some PDs. We're making soup because it's soup season. And I figured I'd bring y'all along for the ride. So the weather today is super rainy, dreary, cloudy. So I'm gonna make myself a hot cup of coffee, which let's be honest, I was going to do that anyway, <laughs> but this gives me even more of an excuse to maybe have a second cup. Then we're gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna walk on my walking pad, get some steps in since the weather is not great and I'm not going outside. And while I'm upstairs walking, we're gonna have a little story time because as you will see, my office has had a little redecoration that I did not ask for. So as you can see, Mother Nature decided I needed a nice skylight in my office. <laughs> I don't remember consenting to this remodel, but here we are. So here's the short story of what happened. <laughs> we had a hailstorm come through and it was a pretty good hailstorm. We're talking golf ball size hail. Did not realize at the time that it damaged our roof. So fast forward two weeks when a really big thunderstorm came through, I came into my office the next morning after it poured down rain and there was a little bit of water on the floor. I could see a spot in the ceiling where it was dripping, so I knew that there was a leak, meaning water had gotten in through the roof. So I contacted a roofing company so that they could come out and be able to repair it or do something, whatever roofing companies do. The roof. In the meantime, throughout the day, I moved all of my stuff and I was monitoring it and I could see that it was getting kind of like a bubble of water. So Billy at lunchtime came home, we poked a hole in it cause that's what we read online to do. Some water escaped, but not a whole lot. So we thought the worst of it was over. Meanwhile, the roofing guy was gonna be here in like 30 minutes. So I said, great, I'm gonna go for a walk. I need to de-stress. Came home from my walk about five minutes before the roofing guy showed up. <laughs> open the door to my office, insulation and drywall everywhere. So within that 30 minutes that I had gone for a walk, the entire ceiling had collapsed. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Could be worse, it could always be worse, right? We're gonna put our positive pants on. The roof has been repaired, but it needs to be replaced because it's the original roof on the house, it's very old. Once the roof is replaced, then we can get the ceiling in here repaired. But that has been my life for the past several weeks, dealing with roofing companies, insurance, all that fun stuff. Let's move on to something you actually care about, shall we? <laughs> Digital escape rooms. Next week, I have a full tutorial video going up on YouTube for how to create a digital escape room in Google Forms. I'm gonna warn you now, it's a hefty video. It's very involved. But the good news is, if you don't wanna create it yourself, the exact escape room that I will show you how to make, I have available as a template in my TPT store. All you have to do is add in your own questions and answers, but the game is already set up, all the images and GIFs are there, so you are ready to rock and roll. But, in the tutorial video, I will walk you through how to make it yourself from start to finish. The one thing I don't show you in that video because I ran out of time is how I created the images and GIFs that I inserted in. Now, last week I posted a video on how to create custom headers in Canva for Google Classroom and Google Forms. So if you have not already seen that video, make sure you go back and watch it. I'll link it in the description box of this video as well but the process is actually exactly the same as how I created the images and GIFs for the digital escape room, but I will give you a more behind the scenes in depth look now. So this is the Canva file where I created all of the images you will see in the digital escape room. You will notice there are duplicates of some of them. That's because I created GIFs and that's what I wanted to focus on for this. So let's come to this one with the computer. So within this, I have multiple images layered over top of each other. So I have this desk image with the computer and then separate is this image in the background with the bulletin board. 
but I wanted a message to appear on the computer. So I started with just this blank one of the computer and then I added in this GIF on top. Now I just searched like loading symbol and this came up on Canva. I put it on the computer screen and then on the next one, I have this random coding type looking image that I inserted on top and you will notice there is an animation. So I have this wipe animation, which is going to make it kind of appear coming down and then it will animate on the exit as well. So each of these slides has a time. Now I'm gonna hit duplicate just so I can show you. So this slide will play for five seconds. Let me come back up to this one. This one is timed at three seconds. And then this one is timed at five seconds as well. So I want to export these three slides together into a GIF or GIF, however you wanna say it. So I need to export slides 18, 19, and 20. So I'm gonna come here to share, download. I'm gonna switch the file type to GIF. And then under slides, I want to do slide 20, but also 19 and 18. I'm gonna click done and I'm going to click download. Now this is time consuming and keep in mind for a digital escape room, this is extra, right? Like it's not required to create the digital escape room. It just makes it more fun. So when you watch the video next week, if you're like Michelle, that's way too much for me. It's fine. You can get the template that already has all of these inserted. Like I've done the hard work for you. So if you like the idea of having these involved images and GIFs, you can grab the template and they will already be made for you. Okay, so now that it has downloaded, I will show you what it looks like. So we start with just the blank computer screen. From there, the loading symbol will pop up. So it shows that it's loading. And then we have that little message up here. It will stay there for a few seconds. It will then disappear and it starts over. So each of the images you will see me insert in next week's video, I created just like this one by one. Now, some of them are just pictures and some of them are gifs, it kind of depends. The other thing I'm working on is this freebie. So in that video, I will mention a free guide that you can download that will walk you through how to create the digital escape room from start to finish. So if the video is too overwhelming and you'd rather have like written out directions with pictures, I've got you. I actually had this guide already created because I gave it away in some of my PD sessions as a freebie, but I wanna go in and just kind of I don't know, add a little more detail, zhuzh it, if you will. So again, I'm just making this right in Canva. By the time you're watching this video, this will be posted on my website. So if you wanna go ahead and grab it now, you can. I will link it for you in the description box but it will walk you through exactly what you need to do in order to set up the form for the digital escape room. There's pictures along the way to help. And then I even have some example like digital escape room tasks, some Google forms like tips and tricks, and this is all available completely free. So this is on my list today to try to get done so I can get it posted on my website so it is ready for this video as well as the one going up next week. Now I know some of the people that watch my videos are really just here for the ember content so hello here she is now she actually had a dental procedure done yesterday isn't that right she got a cleaning and she got her teethers checked up because she has some breakage when we adopted her she had some wear and tear on her teeth but everything looked good she didn't need any sealants or extractions do you want to do a puzzle yeah. I feel like these dog puzzles are the equivalent of planning lessons for your students because it takes longer for me to set up the puzzle, you know, break apart a treat, put a little piece in each section than it does for her to actually complete the puzzle. I will put this thing down and she will have it solved and eat all of the pieces in like 30 seconds. Meanwhile, it takes me a solid minute in order to get it made. So is the juice worth the squeeze? Ember would say yes. I'm not so sure. Ready? On your mark, get set. Go. All right, quality control. Let's check, let's see how you did. 
Those are all clear. Clear. All right, good job. Good job. Can you lay down? Good girl. It's classroom time. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm headed into a local school to volunteer. More on that in a second. First, I gotta tell y'all about this jacket I just got over the weekend from Costco because it's my new favorite thing. It is so comfortable, it is so warm. Is it the most fashionable? No, but do we care about that? Also, no. <laughs> the brand is, I think it was 32 degrees north, but I just got it last weekend, so you might still be able to find it at your Costco. I don't know. It was less than $20 and it's just so soft and cozy. And I know what you're thinking, Michelle, you live in Texas. How cold can it be? It's in the 50s, which for Texas is on the colder side. Most other places, you probably wouldn't need a jacket for that, but I needed a jacket. Back to volunteering and heading to a school. I'm excited. Can you tell I'm excited? So back in the summer, Bridget and I hosted a meetup at Mozart's, which is a local coffee shop, and I connected with a local teacher. I actually went into her classroom at the beginning of the school year to help out just with some setup and organization, things like that. And I told her I want to come in like once a month and just help her with whatever is needed. And same goes for like her team, like prepping copies, laminating, cutting, whatever you want me to do. like. I am yours. So I'm headed in today and I also ask them what drinks they want because I want to be the person I wish I had when I was in the classroom. So I said, hey, send me a drink order for you and your team teachers like Starbucks, a local coffee shop, whatever you want. I will bring y'all the drinks when I come. So I'm actually grabbing them some drinks from a place called Juice Land, which is a Texas smoothie chain, but it's so good. <laughs> so I already placed the order online. I'm gonna go pick it up, head to the school, and get my volunteering on. All right, this is a major close up because I wedged my camera between my steering wheel and my front windshield so I wouldn't have to hold it. <laughs> but that was fun and enjoyable. It was a PD day, so there were no students, but I helped prep science materials for some stations they're gonna do next week. And I graded some papers, which I came across a little hack that she does that I thought was genius. And I don't know why I never thought of this, but I'm gonna share it with you. There was one page that had multiple choice questions on the front and back. So on the master copy, so before she made copies for the whole class, she listed like up at the top, just a small little area, front one, two, three, four, five, because there were five questions on the front and then back six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because there were up to 10 questions. So as the kids completed the page, they had to fill in their answer choice for each question in that little spot. So then when I was grading it, it was all in one spot rather than having to like flip each page over. And I just thought it was so easy and simple. And I'm now mad at myself that I spent years without ever doing that. <laughs> getting colder out, we're making soup because I love soup, but I don't want to eat soup in the middle of the summer when it's over 100 degrees. <laughs> so tonight I'm doing a chicken pot pie soup. I've made it before several times and I love it. It's super easy. You make it all in one pot. It takes like 30 minutes. It's full of veggies. What's not to love? I will link the recipe that I use down below. But to make it a little bit faster when we get home from the gym, I am prepping some of the ingredients in advance so that all I have to do is throw everything in the pot. So I just baked the chicken, cut up the celery and the carrots. Now I'm cutting up the onions, which if you are like me and your eyes do not cope well with cutting onions, you need this vegetable chopper, okay? I saw this online and I thought, eh, 
is it a necessity? After purchasing and using it for several months, I can attest, yes, it is a necessity, at least if you struggle to cut onions without crying. <laughs> there are different like attachments. So this is the thicker one, but there's a thinner one. There's a spiralizer, but y'all, here's how easy it is, okay? You take the onion, which I'll just use this piece right here, okay? You put this down and watch how easy you get the point. It's just so much faster than trying to cut it by hand. I don't have to worry about crying. No woman, no cry. It's on Amazon for like 30 bucks. So I will link it for you down below. But what I love is once you cut it apart, then you just have all the onions here. I can dump it in. And then now all I have to do is throw everything in a pot for dinner. finished product. It's definitely a thicker soup, but I really enjoy that. And then I always cook up some biscuits on the side. I make some good homemade biscuits, but I don't have time for that right now. So we went with just the basic canned ones. I typically will break them apart and put them on top of my bowl. So it's like a little chicken pot pie. We have started a new Friday routine. I'm calling it pints and pictures. I might be the only one calling it that. Billy just calls it movie and ice cream, but <laughs> Billy loves to watch movies. I'm not the biggest movie person. I would rather watch shows, but I do love ice cream. So we have combined the two and we alternate who gets to pick the movie. This week, it is my turn. I'm choosing Gleason, which technically is a documentary, but whatever, it's the length of a movie. It's on Amazon Prime. It's about Steve Gleason, who was an NFL player, and he started the documentary after he was diagnosed with ALS, and it has really good reviews. I'm looking forward to it. For ice cream, I've been on a big Halo Top kick, which I ate Halo Top back in college, but eventually I realized it wasn't the best, like the texture, it was kind of icy. However, they have reformulated and I'm obsessed with it again. It's super creamy. It's like a healthier ice cream. Really, it's just higher in protein and it has fiber, all that good stuff. But the reason I call it pints and pictures is because Billy and I each pick out a pint and we enjoy it with the movie. I am having the pumpkin pie flavor, which is one of the seasonal flavors. Billy, what do you want tonight? Well, considering I can only choose between like two because the rest no. are yours. Well, hold on. You have a pumpkin pie one in here. Uh huh. There is a caramel, chocolate caramel brownie. Uh -huh. There's plain chocolate and there's chocolate ice cream cake. Um, That's four. Yeah, I think I'll have the pumpkin pie too. You'll have your pumpkin pie? Yes, okay. if you'll allow it. That being said, hopefully you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on. <laughs> And I'll catch you in the next one.